Welcome to the 31st episode of Let's Conquer Books. Jordan Peterson in his book 12 Rules for Life said, You can only find out what you actually believe, rather what you think you believe, by watching how you act. In this episode, I talk about a concept called STEPS, S-T-E-P-P-S, which is an acronym for social currency, triggers, emotion, public, practical stories. So let's get into it. I'm your host, Alexander, the Great Reader, and this is a podcast where we read, study lessons, and build our inner power, because the next level we will reach does not tolerate cowards. This episode was inspired from a book by Jonah Berger called Contagious. Professor Jonah Berger, he teaches marketing at Wharton School of Business in the University of Pennsylvania. Actually, I think Donald Trump went there. I know Peter Lynch is a big hedge fund manager. A lot of big, big Wall Street guys have gone to this school. It's famous business school. The book Contagious is a New York Times and a Wall Street Journal bestseller. So inside this book, there's six key steps. And the word steps is actually stuck. Spelled S-T-E-P-P-S. It's an acronym and enables advertisers to craft contagious content. What I'm going to talk about are the six books I read that applied steps. How they were advertised and marketed in a way that made them contagious to me to read. The first key is social currency. The book says people care about how they look to others. They want to seem smart, cool, and in the know. So be sure to find the inner remarkability and make people feel like insiders. The example I'm going to use is Digital Gold by Nathaniel Popper. He's famous inside the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency community. So he wrote a book. And this was earlier this year, around January, and I wanted to get information. I really didn't know anything about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And this book was praised as a way to understand this new craze that was happening. I remember reaching 20,000 at one point, close to it. And everybody was talking about it. People were becoming cryptocurrency millionaires. I read the book and it gave me a good historical timeline of Bitcoin. From the beginning to its current state, I read about, you know, its relationship with the Silk Road, its upbringings in Asia, a lot of things, very interesting. So after reading it, this book, I felt like I was in, I was an insider, I knew a lot. And that's what made this book contagious to me because I wanted to be an insider on this whole Bitcoin and cryptocurrency craze. So key number two is triggers. So the professor says top of mind means tip of tongue. So consider the context and grow your habitat so that people are frequently triggered to think about your product or idea. Now, the example I will use is a book called Skin in the Game by Nassim Tellem. You've heard me mention this author before because I discovered him this year. I kept seeing him praised for his other books online. A lot of smart people always referencing his book, especially Fooled by Randomness, The Back Swan, Anti-Fragile. He's known as a very intellectual man. When he put out this new book, Skin in the Game, I liked the title. That's what triggered me. I knew that he was famous for these other books. That was a trigger too. So he was putting out this new book. But the the title, Skin in the Game, I like that. I believe in that concept. You got to have skin in the game. So I ended up reading Skin in the Game and I liked it a lot. 
I liked his writing style. I liked his philosophy, his beliefs. So I ended up reading all his other books this year because they were that good. Which is a good thing I, that I got triggered in that way because I discovered Nassim Taleb and I read all his books, which have been a joy to read and a lot of good context. Key number three is emotion. So the book says, when we care, we share. Emotional content often goes viral. So focus on feelings rather than function. And kindle the fire using high arousal, arousal emotions. The example I'm going to use, Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. He's the founder of Nike. I was born and raised in Chicago. 1983, I was born. Jordan was drafted in 85. They won in 91. I was... Eight years old when they first, and I was really young, and I loved basketball. So there's an emotional attachment to Jordan since the very beginning. And Nike had Jordan as one of their ambassadors, brand ambassadors. And to me, Jordan shoes were like must-haves, the most beautiful shoes, they they ignite so much emotion to me to this day that I even buy them some of my son and I stare at his shoes all the time. And I've always been a sneaker head, like they say. Like, I like sneakers. I used to like the Bo Jacksons, Harachis, Deion Sanders. I used to love Nikes. I was very loyal to Nike. So when I saw that Nike logo really big on the cover of Shoe Dog, Oh, the emotional trigger. It, it triggered me emotionally. And that's It was contagious. I was like, oh, I got to read this. And it was the story of Phil Knight, the founder. And it was incredible. I loved every second of that book. And it made me like Nike more because it told his journey, his struggles, what he overcame, what he had to pursue, all the risks he took. Amazing book. Key number four is public. Book says, built to show, built to grow. The more public something is, the more likely people will imitate it. Design products and initiatives that advertise themselves and create some visible behavioral residue. A great example of this is Crushing It by Gary Vaynerchuk. He's one of the big dogs online and he gives tons of free content. He even wrote a book about that philosophy that he applies on a daily basis basis called jab, 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 right hook, meaning give, 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 ask. So he has a great podcast. He has a daily vlog. He has a daily email list. He has a list on Spotify of his favorite music. He has a medium, the article blogs he does. You go on and on. There's so much ways to consume content from Gary V that's free and it's very valuable information. So his ask this year was buy his new book called Crushing It, which basically was all that free content condensed in the book. So when he drops the new book, he asks and his community, you know, they gather together and push it all over a line because that's the way to give back to Gary. It was very public online, on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Everybody was taking pictures of the book, praising the book. I already liked Gary Vee, but so much people were talking about the book. I was like, oh, man, it started. The hype was getting to me and I really, really want to be reading. And I even was like, oh, I read the book, too. And I even listened to the audio book because it was such in a public way all over the place. So key number five is practical value. News you can use. Useful things get shared. So highlight incredible value and expertise so that people can easily pass it on. (coughs) The example I will use is Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. I always knew that sleep is important, but there are so much different schools of thought. One that comes to mind is Jocko. He's a guy who says, wake up four in the morning every day, no matter what. He's not for that thought. He says, you need at least eight hours. 
And this book is being praised as the must-read on the subject of sleep. I read it and it is. I've never read a book that just, I feel, ha talks and really covers a lot of every aspect of sleep. Good, bad, techniques, things like that. There's tons of info that scared me straight, like harder to go to the gym if you don't sleep enough. It, there's worse results when you, from the gym when you go if you don't sleep enough. It's harder to eat healthy when you don't sleep enough. There's a decrease in performance of anything you do at work or anything you're doing in your business or school when you, you go past six days and six hours a day, like not sleeping a whole day. Sleep-deprived people choose easy tasks compared to people who sleep well, which is not good if you're trying to move up a corporation or create new skills and or value at school, a business you're trying to run. So it's not easy to pass on this information like it says, but it's easy to recommend the book. There's a lot of practical ways to understand the importance of sleep and respect sleep. Uh, you can't do everything the book says, but you can recommend the book and let the person pick and choose. It's better than nothing. Key number six is stories. The book says information travels under what seems like idle chatter. Stories are vessels, so build a Trojan horse. Create a narrative or a story that people want to tell, which carries your idea along for the ride. The example I will use is Hillbilly Elegy by J.D. Vance. I found this book through a podcast called Mixed Mental Arts, recommend it. And I was really impressed by this book because... The story. I never heard the side of someone who considered a hillbilly living in these rural towns. And this kid grew up in very bad conditions. His mother was a drug addict, never really cared for him, was raised by his grandmother who was very unique, very violent, had guns around, point guns at people, threatened this J.D. Vance is the author and... But she always encouraged him, and I think he joined one of the branches of military. When he got out, he went to college, and then he was able to get in Yale University, this hillbilly, with a family of people who never really did nothing in their lives. And he goes into great detail talking about the life of a hillbilly. I found it amazing, his story, and how he was able to describe what it is a hillbilly but also encourage others in similar conditions not maybe hillbilly but poor uneducated really low opportunities and help you to really get out of it and achieve great things like going to Yale and being a lawyer amazing book and that was contagious to me that story so the action for this episode is Read the book by Jonah Berger, Contagious, to get a deeper understanding of steps. Remember, I told you context is key. You get a real deep. Don't just go by my explanation. And when you're looking for new books to read, look for which steps are attracting you to read that book. Is it the information that you want to be an insider? You know, your social currency. Is it something triggering you about that book that... The title or the subject matter? Is it a rising emotion in you that you want to read this book? Is it been one of those books that you just see everywhere online in public forums that's being recommended and people taking pictures or embracing? Or is it something that's practical that you're looking to understand and maybe recommend to others? Or is it a story being told that you want to read and you like stories and it looks like a very entertaining story? I want to thank you, listeners, for over 1,900 plays and downloads. The reading challenge is at 120 books out of 140. Amazing. 
So let's connect. Let's talk about your reading challenge. Let's talk about what you like or don't like about the episodes I've done. Maybe you have some ideas of podcast episodes. I'm looking at interview anyone in the book realm, authors, book readers, publisher, anybody have an engaging conversations over the subject of books. So let's connect on Twitter. I'm a lot on Instagram, a little bit on Facebook, and all the links are in the description. Catch you on the next one. Please subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Anchor, or any other podcasting platform so you don't miss the next episode where I talk about The Third Door, the best book I've read in 2018 so far.